All right, good morning, everyone. Well, no, good afternoon. It is 2 o'clock, Thursday, January 26. This is the first Public Services and Facilities Committee meeting of the year. Um, I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order and acknowledge that the press and the public have been duly notified. No, it's blinking. Um, in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act. And the first order of business is the election of a chair. And at this time, I will take nominations from the floor for the I, office of chair. I would like to nominate um, Councilman Streetman for chair. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Can I put myself up? Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can. I'll nominate myself. <laughs> All right. We have two nominations. We'll vote in the order that the nominations were received. So all those in favor of Councilmember Streetman signify by saying aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Um, so I will um, turn it over to you, Chair Streetman, for the um, nomination of Vice Chair. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, so we'll go on to the nomination and election of Vice Chair. So do I hear a nomination for Vice Chair? I will nominate Kevin Popson. Second. Any other nominations? So that would carry on its own weight, right? The only nomination, do we need to vote on that? You, I mean, just procedurally do, um, okay. do a call all, for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Congratulations. All right. Moving on. Item number three, citizens' comments. Uh, do we have any, Nicole? No, sir. Okay. And we have one item of old business uh, that we have on the uh, agenda from the old Real Property Committee. So, and that is discussion of temporary parking agreement with Islander 71 for the shared parking lot at the Isle of Palms Marina. So, Desiree, I'll turn it over to you and or Douglas to give us a little feedback on this and uh, let's, before we open it up for discussion. Sure. Um, so just to, as a reminder, the last time that we met, we had a discussion with the engineer that we hired, Matt Klein, um, who we tasked to develop several parking layouts for what we call sort of the north side of the boat ramp at the marina. Um, with the new um, development in which, you know, Mike Schuler has taken over possession of the two leases that, that, that operate and manage the boat ramp and the, and, and, um, the docks, along with the lease that um, manages the store, um, there is no longer any control or management of that lease of any portion of parking on what we're going to call the restaurant side of, of the marina. We had lengthy, lengthy discussions about different parking layouts that we would want to work on with the restaurant to enhance the availability of parking, improve the flow, and um, tie it to what hopefully is a very nice green space um, and the new public dock. Multiple iterations were developed. We ultimately um, reviewed three options that um, included that differed in the number of trailer parking spaces that were that were um, made being made available through those different layouts and ultimately we we sort of reached a point where um, it would be difficult to um, have an agreement with the restaurant for this season to implement one of those parking layouts for this season um, we also struggled in identifying what the, the 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 number of trailer parking spaces that I think the city would like to see there, and there was some conversation about how the marina property in itself is going to behave with this new boat club. You know the improvements that Mr. Schuler is doing in his side, the addition of a, 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 frankly a ton of parking spaces and in his, in his le uh, uh, leased area, um, and a desire to wait and see how the marina operations behave and the new 
dynamic system, you know, that we that we see happening there with with the boat club, and again the improvements that he's making. Um, so the decision at the time, at least from the restaurant's perspective, and I don't want to, they're not here, and I don't, don't want to speak for them, but I guess the suggestion at the time was made that let's have a temporary agreement for this season, use this opportunity to gather a lot of data of usage, particularly resident usage that we can, you know, use to understand what the true demand for trailer and vehicle parking spaces would be, and again, give some time to know how the how the marina property is going to operate. Um, that is what we're doing here. We've met with the restaurant folks a couple of times to try to articulate what that temporary um, arrangement would look like that would allow us to gather data, that would allow us to operate that efficiently in a way that's sharing, you know, that we're sharing with the residents and with the restaurant. So we have a proposal that we want to share with you all that we've, you know, worked on with the restaurant. Um, you don't have anything in your packet. We'll walk you through. We'll put it in paper, get your reactions to it, and um, answer any questions. So I'll let Douglas walk you through in the map, and Amy's going to zoom in. Um, this is the the map that shows the different areas and who has control over what. And uh, as a reminder, um, the red area is the restaurant's exclusive parking parking lot. The green area is the shared parking lot, that it's meant to be shared among tenants of the marina in an unreserved, um, unreserved um, first come first serve basis. And then the, the L in white is where our current resident only designated parking spaces are located. And in yellow, is the restaurant employee parking lot um, that they have through a separate agreement with the city. So just wanted to orient everybody and um, we'll walk through what, what this proposal would, would look like. And this would be in place for the season until Labor Day where we can reassess and ideally be able to agree on a new overall layout for the marina prop for this part of the marina property for implementation in the off season and hopefully be in place for before the next season in 2024. So if if there are no questions, we'll go ahead and articulate what this temporary uh, agreement, if you will, would look like. So I, two quick questions. <clears throat> so the M. OU between Brian and the restaurant. Now Mike Schuler's there. Is that gone away? Yes, the MOU expired back in October, and I think they kept operating as if the ex the agreement was in existing until the end of December or mid December when Mike Schuler closed and took possession of of Brian's leases. <clears throat> so if we agree with this temporary, then we would be in an MOU with Parker 116 as the city on, on how the shared work. Correct, works. I mean, I think that we, it, it, an MOU would be one avenue that we can that we can use to spell out the terms of, of the agreement of how this space would be utilized for the next few months. And second question, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, but um, on the employee parking, wasn't that also an agreement between Brian and the restaurant to share employees in that area? And since Brian and Mike did their deal, is Mr. Schuler out of that now? So that employee parking is for Marker 116 only? So you're correct. Uh, MJV and the restaurant had entered into a separate agreement for the yellow area, which is the employee parking lot. And that agreement established that those, the space in yellow would be exclusive for restaurant employees. There was a lease back of eight spaces that we'll talk about in a minute that Brian was leasing back for his employees. Those eight spaces, Mike Schuler doesn't need. So that, that, that is a decision point for, for the city, how those eight spaces are going to, going to be utilized. But the agreement 
that used to be in place between MJV and the restaurant for that space because Mike Schuler has gone done away with it, that is an agreement that the city assumed. So it's that the same agreement is in place that establishes a, a cost share for the exclusive use of, of that area in yellow. Um, but there are eight that the restaurant doesn't have, Schuler doesn't need that we need to decide on how they will they're gonna be used. Do we have anything that we formalized in regards to that? I mean, we, we don't, we're, we're, we're talking about this, but there's nothing that's been written down as a temporary contract or memorandum, memorandum of understanding on that. We just On the shared lot? Yeah. No, that okay. that's what we're going to talk about today. And based on your reaction, we can certainly draft something that council would then need to, right. to agree on. And are we also today going to include the... Uh, uh, the parking lot for the employees are we going to be able to talk about that even the, if it's not specified here on the agenda yes the, but the employee parking lot there's already agreement that's in place and council has already voted to assume that agreement uh, right for the city so that's that has that okay. agreement hasn't changed from when um the city entered into a lease with the restaurant in 2020. so that would just come down to whether the city wanted their eight spaces or give them to the restaurant we have a couple of options that we want to discuss with you all about how to use those eight spaces. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Can we go ahead and walk through that? Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to just reference the, the and that's Exhibit C in the, um, in the leases. So uh, we'll use that as our reference point. As, as you all have established, the yellow portion there, that, that's kind of dealt with and, and tidally um, kind of off your table that leaves what's green and then what we refer to as the upside down L. So the upside down L is currently exclusive resident spaces. Green is generally made up of trailer spaces in the middle. We think there's about 12 depending on how many signs are knocked down at the current time, but there should be about 12 trailer spaces. <laughs> but those same 12 spaces can also be utilized as 24 car spaces. So when a trailer leaves, frees it up, it could be either used by another trailer or by two cars. And that becomes kind of a key point. So in our guiding kind of principle of, of how to deal with this green and white space, we wanted to come up with a plan that truly shared that space evenly between the two people the two entities, the city and Islander 71. So the, the basis of that or the way that we, we're getting to that in this plan is to take all of the perimeter parking spaces. So take out in your mind the center parking spaces. Right. All of those perimeter spaces, which we think today is about 38, but there's different con configurations. It could be it could be expanded. Uh, we do know that Islander wants to move their driveway, so it could be reconfigured slightly. But those 38 spaces, we would just agree to split those exclusive use of those 38 50-50. So if it's 38, city residents would get exclusive use of 19, and the restaurant would get exclusive use of 19. Now, the restaurant has indicated to us in, their, in all parts of their lot, residents could park for free, so it would be free resident parking, but it wouldn't necessarily be exclusive resident parking, where the 19 would be exclusive resident parking. So that's how we plan to deal with the outside perimeter spaces. When we come to the inside spaces, those 12 parking Tra trailer parking spaces, the plan would be to share those 50-50 throughout the course of the day. So in other words, the city would get those spaces in the first half of the day. It would then transition to being restaurant spaces in the second half of the day. Um, if and, available. And, and to deal with kind of the transition between the two, the way we've talked about that working is at 3 o'clock, and, and, and I guess we, we'll get to this, but, but the plan would be that there be an attendant actually controlling this and, and monitoring this. But at 3 o'clock, um, somebody showing up with a trailer 
wouldn't be, would not be directed to those 12 spaces. Um, but that if it was already had a trailer in it, there would be no need to get your trailer out of there until you just were done using your trailer. So if you parked it, if you parked at noon and you were going to go out till 8 PM, that would be fine. Your trailer could, could sit there. But at three o'clock when a space became available at that point, uh, a patron, a car patron for the restaurant, uh, would be directed, could be directed to those interior spaces. So that's kind of how we're splitting the, the middle of the day with the morning being trailer, the night being uh, the restaurant, but then there's going to be this transition. And we, we envision that happening as trailers naturally leave after three, um, restaurant patrons would start to fill in those spaces. But if one or more of those trailer parking spaces was still open after three and a resident came in with the trailer, they could park there. I mean, it's not just totally directed to restaurant parking after three, right? That's a, that's a nuance that, you know, we get, we could certainly talk about that. We, we had envisioned that the ref, because we had gotten exclusive use for the first half of the day, uh -huh. that we would give exclusive use to them in the second half of the day. That was really the basis of us, but we could, you know, these are all a first attempt at a, at a system. So, in general, that's how the parking spaces would be used. Um, to control that, we would plan for there to be a rope around the shared shared lot to keep people. So I guess another important part is there would be no overnight parking. So, you know, an, an important part of availability is the turning over those spaces. And we would want to avoid somebody showing up on Wednesday or Thursday, putting their car or trailer there and then leaving for four days for a long weekend. So mm -hmm. all kind of, um, all programs would have it being no overnight parking. Um, we think that to control that access, we would need a, a rope, basically a gate around it. Uh, and then we envision, and, and a, what the restaurant has witnessed is that really the problem is preventing somebody from misparking, that if you don't control them when they're first arriving, they're going to pull in and you can really never get them out. You, you have a very hard time getting an enforcement um, to be reactive to that. So they felt like it was important to be proactive and basically direct people as they arrive to, to where they need to go. If they're a resident, they would be directed uh, to the right place. If there were a, a restaurant patron, they'd be directed to the right place. Um, I I would like for us to find or talk a little bit more about whether or not there's an option where after 3 p.m. there is, we can guarantee at least one or two trailer spots that could be available to residents. Because if, you know, if a resident wants to go out at four <clears throat> o'clock, then, you know, if, if we don't allow any new trailer, resident trailers in that area after a certain time, then they're limited. Obviously, Mr. Schuler is going to have his own trailer parking spaces, but we, we don't manage those, right? So we don't know how or when they'll be available. So I'd like for us to explore if there is a mechanism that we can, with a restaurant, solve for that. Solve for if somebody, if a resident comes after three and there is parking available, that they're not going to be turned away and they can still park in one of those 12 spaces. Mm -hmm. I, I, I personally would like to see us do something along those lines too, that there would always at least be an option for one or two residents to be able to park if they're going out later in the afternoon. Now, Schuler is also offering free resident parking for trailers also, right? On his side, that's correct. On his correct. side, On yes. his side, so free boat, boat launch and, and free trailer parking. So... Um, the, the other part that we haven't gotten to, and, and it's the, you know, part of this, part of the site is obviously public. Uh, we're going to have a public pier. So that leaves what, the space there that um, is really the eight being leased back currently um, that we would propose those be the eight spaces. So somebody shows up that's not a resident. Public. I'm sorry. Eight public. Those eight spaces would be public spaces. That would be 
somebody, somebody like me, I'm not a resident, I'm not going to the restaurant, but I could park in those eight spaces if, if they're available. Are those big enough for trailers? No. no just cars. <clears throat> just cars, and then that would be, as, as, as you mentioned, I think, so we could either say, okay, this is dedicated residential parking, or we could just say it's open to the public no matter what. You're, if that's open, you you can park there. And I, I think we felt like, you know, part of this is publicly funded. Part of it is, we I think we feel like it's important that there be some component that we as a city can say, there there is public parking available somewhere down there. So that's, these eight would be where we're fulfilling that obligation. Is, is eight spots enough for that? I mean, we, we use a tax money and I mean, right. we've, we don't have any public parking in in is in Schuler space. Is there any public? I, I mean, I think that any member of the public that goes to the store or goes, you know, to the marina operations, you know, he's going to have plenty of parking. He's not limiting it to just, you know, residents, you know, anybody going to his operation. And same same as the restaurant, right? I mean, they re depend on, right? Uh, you know, non-residents, non-resident patrons. So. The resident, the, the restaurant, the pink area, red, pink, that's all public. Mm -hmm. Correct. But yeah. anything on the other end is, do, do we know yet? Is that going to be, you know, ice, are there going to be areas where it's going to be boat club or whatever? Or is it, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, I think, I mean, in my, eight if you're going to one of the establishments, I think you're well covered if, if you're a member of the public. I guess the the outlier would be the public dock. If you're right. if you're going to the public dock, you're not going to either the marina or the uh, restaurant. I think those eight spaces. So to me, the eight is a is a reasonable number for that. Yeah. Knowing yeah, that any other only, use yeah. and think you know and keep in mind too, this would be temporary. You know the the plan that we are pursuing of piping all the 41st from Waterway to the end of the road. You know, we're envisioning, you know, 20, 30 parking spaces there that would be public parking spaces. Um, so, I, you know, I think we'll, we're going to solve for that concern of, 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 you know, accessibility. I think the more parking in that area, the better, as long as it's contained to the site. Um, so, again, like Douglas said, because every operation has their own parking, those members of the public visiting those establishments are well covered they, they're going to be parking in those areas um and we, our, our handicap spots anybody can park there right correct and do we think if we do this even temporarily that there's going to be a need for additional handicap parking or are we good with what we've got yeah, i would say that until we reconfigure it uh, according to Matt Klein's plan or whatever plan we ultimately agree on, that we're covered. Well, we're up to G, so, I mean, we just keep going down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think we're getting closer. Yeah. Um, okay. And and that will be something that we're going to continue to work through this, you know, in the next few months so that we can continue to refine it so that by the end of the season we're ready to, we're ready to agree on a final layout that would allow us to execute it hopefully off-season. So there's still going to be a lot of work to be done on that end. This should help us understand demand and how it would operate. It might not make a difference, right? It, it for, there will be, I think, people in the community that want to have as many trailer parking spaces regardless of their use. We just want to be able to provide you with some data that says, you know, they were used X percent of the time, and then we can use that to to put a plan in place that, that you know, it's efficient and, and works out for, for both the restaurant and the city. And the, and the work that's going to happen on the public dock is going to be in this coming year, right? So we, it would make sense to wait and do all this kind of at the same time? Is that kind of the... That would be ideal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, our goal would be to have permits in place soon so that we can bid it out and construct it. And if we can only disrupt the site once, that certainly would be ideal. At least we'll have the bulkhead done. The boardwalk, <clears throat> yes. Right. Boardwalk. So this would give us what we think would be some, at least some needed flexibility and a chance for those three months to 
really see how things sort out down there. This is the first season in quite a long time we will have a restaurant open as well as a new renovated marina store under a new uh, lease arrangement here. And uh, yeah, our, our thought is to find a way to take photos throughout kind of an automated system that would just snap three photos a day at key times so we can, you know, at the end of the summer, we can, we can truly know because we're kind of, I think the restaurant folks feel like the number of resident only trailers being utilized down there is not an overwhelming number, but, but we really don't know. We don't know. So this will give us a control. So we'll know when we see uh, a trailer in this space, if we've controlled access, we'll know it's a resident trailer. So we will have good solid counts on exactly what's, what the demand is and be able to measure that. And, and in this plan, you know, we would have a, 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 a number of resident only designated resident only parking spaces which right now are 16 we think that number is going to grow um, once we determine the total number around the perimeter and we split that 50 50 um, plus they would be parking for free anywhere else on the site plus free trailer resident only sp spaces in the middle so and, and that is something that we're gaining we while those spaces have always been trailer parking spaces, they haven't been designated for residents only. And I think that um, that is something we've heard loud and clear that the community really wants. Um, and we, we're trying to find a way to define what shared is. And this seems to us like a very cut and dry, mm -hmm. you know, 50-50 <clears throat> in terms of the time for those 12 spots in the middle and then 50-50 in um, the count of spaces around the perimeter. Right, plus we have the eight spaces that we have there as well that would not necessarily be just dedicated totally to resident, but they would be public parking. Correct, they would be available. And we also still have X number of golf cart parking down along 41st too, right? Correct. Next to the lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure those are many, still in place. I mean, uh, we've got recycle and all that there now, right? Re glass recycling and possibly yeah. composting so yes know, that, I think the last time we counted it was 12 between 12 and 16 I think it was 12 before I, I don't mm -hmm. know if it'll be 12 going forward but there's still other areas that you know people with a golf cart could park as well so one yeah. last piece that I don't you know want to make sure we discuss too is Douglas mentioned that the plan would be to have an attendant there throughout the summer season particularly Thursday through Sunday, which is where we have the most uh, visitation, and um, splitting that cost 50-50 with the restaurant. Um, that, that's something that was, you know, it's not budgeted. Um, the, the restaurant has proposed, um, I don't want to complicate this, but um, <laughs> restaurant has proposed you, um, sort of... Um, using the money that they're currently paying for the yellow lot for the employee parking lot using that rather than paying that to the city using those funds to hire a an attendant that would still need to be split 50 50 with the city so i, I just want to get your reaction on whether or not that would be you all would entertain that concept or we don't want to complicate things by, you know, in, including a separate agreement, a separate, a separate financial um, agreement for the employee lot and treating this separately. So taking the, the, the money that they normally would pay us for the private parking lot and just applying that to the attendant? Correct. Their part? That's not cost sharing. That's just well, the shifting cost that they would have paid us anyway over here and offsetting for the 2000 bucks a month. I'm personally not in favor of that. I think, I think if we have an agreement that says $2,000 per month for three months, they pay 1000 we pay 1000 and we still have the same deal in place for the uh, private parking lot or employee or whatever it is, in my opinion. Because we still have to maintain it as the city, correct? 
the the private the lot. Yes. <clears throat> What's the cost for the attendant? We estimated, and, and this this number came from them, I believe, about two thousand a month to have somebody there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we're basically so it's a thousand for the city and a thousand for them. I, I think I was thinking it was two thousand was our half. Oh, is it? We'll we'll get clarity on that. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> four thousand a month. That sounds like a lot, but we we'll get clarity. <laughs> I like the idea of an attendant. I, I, don't know about the rest I, I of do them. too. Yeah, I think that that's a, a good step to take. You, for you're going to have to have a temporary traffic situation. Cop. Yeah, and it will help us gather the the data. Right. Also. I don't think without it, you're not getting right good information about usage. Yeah. So I think for yeah. at least for this year. It's and I I would say that they that that person needs to be hired by the city and you know work for the city just to, to avoid any you know, perception of conflict, um, if they're collecting data that's ultimately going to be used to determine one layout over the other or, you know, just to avoid that perception, then I think it should be um, that person should work for the city um, <clears throat> under a, an ag agreed set of standards and, and regulations that we would agree certainly with the restaurant. How about the cost of maintaining the parking <clears throat> area? I mean, you drive down there now, there's four or five or six, eight potholes. Some of them are pretty deep. So would we share in this agreement any maintenance on the parking lot itself with the restaurant? Well, we've, we've, all, we've already kind of talked about sharing in the cost of the barrier. Um, so I think there would be a cost there. I don't know what that is. I do think they have just redone the potholes i thought they might there might be and and i will tell you they have indicated to us that the material they're using is just fraught with maintenance problems that it you know doesn't take but a few days i think it would be their expectation because it was this way with brian right that we would share in the cost of the maintenance of that i'm, I'm assuming that would be their request to you all i think that, islander paid for the last scraping on that didn't they i, I think brian did it at the beginning of the summer, and I, I do think Islander did it most recently. I think I remember John or someone that I was talking to talked about having <clears throat> done original that in the fall. original contract called for the marina. Yeah, I think Brian did Brian do it. to be mm -hmm. maintaining the, it. But at the beginning was. of the summer. Yeah, I think <clears throat> Brian has consistently done it. I think with this new MOU that was in place for several months last year, right. they agreed to share the revenue and share the cost of maintenance throughout that the period of the MOU. So the spaces will then be designated by signage, I assume? Yes, we would agree on signage <laughs> for, you know, the, the, the vehicular parking spaces that would be resident only. We already have those 16, so if that number increases, once we have a total tally of, of the spaces along the perimeter, those would be added to our count, and then we would, in, we would agree on some new signage for those parking spaces in the middle that say resident trailer parking only, you know, vehicles allowed after 3 p.m. What the, the park to pay signs now, those will go away then I assume? They're currently there now. They would go away under this, this agreement. So there would be no revenue generation under this, under this proposal because residents would be paying for free, would be parking for free, the trailer parking would be free. Um, right, the, the way that the restaurant's lease says is that there is free parking in that whole green shared area, free after eight. The former marina operator was charging for parking there. So that would be another decision point, um, whether or not, you know, restaurant patrons would pay to park there. But if we're giving them 50% of the amount of the you know the total inventory then that would be up for them to decide mm -hmm. i would think if they want to charge or not because those signs are still up so somebody's collecting i'm assuming the marker 116 is collecting if somebody parks there right now well right. once once mr schuler closed on his deal that entire area became city City owned, city managed, and city controlled. So I've, I've requested the restaurant to provide the account data and any revenues that were generated 
uh, from the time that Mike, Mike Schuler closed on his deal to today, because any revenue collected at that time should go directly to the city. Good catch. Okay. What else? Council um, Member Myers, anything? No. I'm, I'm just back to the <clears throat> boat trailer. Amy, do you mind parking. putting the picture again, please? Because <clears throat> one of my thoughts or thing concerns with Councilman Streetman is that 3 o'clock just seems a little early to cut it off to the residents because a lot of people like to take the sunset cruises and so forth. So do we do we designate some of the boat trailer parking, two, three, four spaces, that the time is now five o'clock or six o'clock, that some residents could use it if they want to go out for a sunset. And then by five or six, the city, the restaurants kind of gearing up so i don't know that it really would affect them that much so keeping a number whether it's three four five that would pass the three pass three so so they would be if they're not being used by three they would still remain unused in the event that a resident with a truck and trailer shows up what about before i guess in trying to think through that if the if the agreement was that once that basically there always had to be one available, that it would, as long as it was managed such that, so really two trailers would have to leave in the event that two trailers left, the, the second trailer, that could be taken up with cars and then the one sit available until another one freed up. So there wouldn't be an overwhelming, because I, I don't know how many, I don't know the frequency of, um, somebody showing up after three to launch. Um, but that would probably, to me, that would be a reasonable, there would be probably a space available, but there wouldn't be, and I know that that's their concern, that you know we that they might have each one of those spaces is two patrons, and that's in the summer, that's obviously their critical time. Is So that I know that's a, a near and dear subject for them, but that seems like a reasonable effort that they only use spaces in the event that there's a space still available for a trailer. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be space number one. It could be space number four or space number five. Like, it could move around. So you're yes. not as long as there's always a space. There. a space. And then there's the possibility. If we're going to have an attendant, they could really make that happen. There's the possibility they have a space available. Immediately a resident comes in at 315, and then there's not a space. And then they would have to wait until two trailers left before they were able to park another car to give the one space first and then their second space. It seems like a way that would, you know, keep usage up, which I know is paramount to them, but address maybe the concern of there being at least something available for a resident after hours. Yeah, just trying to try find them. Middle ground somehow, somewhere. And should that? I mean, that should be part. I mean, ultimately, we've got to take this to council anyway. But, but that should be one of the options that we discuss. That should be one of the takeaways and saying, you know, you may want to consider this as part of the discussion we had in committee. So let's look at this as a as a potential option also. And do we want to have that be be in place until a certain time, a later, you know, later than three or? Uh, you know, up until 8 o'clock or 7 p.m. or until the evening. People aren't going to come after dark yeah, or I, even after yeah, 6 yeah. Sundown, maybe. I mean, so maybe yeah. sundown. Yeah. I mean, you could just say people aren't putting their boats in it, in the water at 6 o'clock. I mean, if you have a boat in the water, maybe, but people aren't going to launch a boat I at 6 o'clock. I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> so that could be until I mean, if you go up there in the six. afternoons, it's dead. I mean... Yeah. And the restaurant, I mean, I know this, they may have different hours during the summer. I don't know what Islanders are going to do on that. But, but uh, I mean, typically they open their, their bars at, what, 3 during the weekdays and a little earlier, on, I, I think maybe 10 or 11 o'clock or something on the weekends and uh, yeah, start serving right. around 4. Well, I mean, they're I open all 
all day. Yeah. Lunch. I mean, I mean in the summer, I don't know if they're planning on doing lunch lunch down there or not. I mean, right they have right. lunch. Do they now? During the, on the weekends. No, the, on the weekends, but not during the week. Yeah. I mean, I think this is really only going to yeah, be an issue. That's when we yeah. anticipate it being. Yeah, this is only going to be. And we're only going to have an attendant Thursday to Sunday. Thursday That's through correct. Sunday. Because yeah. I think they're planning on staying closed on Monday. So Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday would be the only days that we would not have an attendant. And yeah. we yeah. would have signage and, you know, people hopefully follow the signage. But um, those would be the only days that could be problematic if they become busy. But um, we can mitigate that. Yeah. And I, and I think the from the restaurant's perception of the usage, I think that they believe that the, <coughs> the resident only trailers, <coughs> you know, that 12, it's probably going to be unlikely that 12 residents are necessary. So it'll, I wouldn't foresee them having a problem with keeping one or two open if, if it's true that they're not very heavily utilized, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. So do you all want us to make um, do y'all want to make a recommendation or just plan on us presenting this? We'll write all this down and present it at the council meeting or workshop meeting um, <clears throat> next month. Yeah, I think y'all's y'all's presentation was sufficient. Yeah, bring it. What bring <laughs> it to bring it to the workshop? Okay. Yeah. yeah. How about that? Good. All right. Anything Thank else? Thank you. All right. Uh, no new business. And let's see, miscellaneous business. We are going to hopefully set a standing meeting date and time that we can all get together. So, Desiree, did you have some suggestions or some feedback on that? I know you would ask all of council. Yes, we would like to continue having all the committee meetings on the, on the same day. I think it's helpful for us. Um, so my proposal would be the first Tuesday of the month at 2 o'clock, if, if that works for everyone. Uh, Public Safety confirmed their meeting for the first Tuesday at 10 a.m., so we would have this at two if that's okay. I know that council member pops in for work. You oftentimes tr leave the leave our area at the end of the week. So that would be, um, hopefully that accommodates your schedule as well. I'm good. Is there any way we can have it earlier in the day? We could do a one, one o'clock. One, one would definitely be better. We could do just one. Just in case it goes longer than an hour. That, yeah. that works too. I'm, I'm, good. I'm good with that okay. also. Okay, we could do 1 p.m. first Tuesday. I think really the only reason we shifted this a little bit was because I had an eye appointment this morning. West Ashley wasn't sure how long I'd be there, but that works. One one p.m. works, and then we'll this afternoon in our other committee meeting we'll see how that works out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we could do that one at three since we're doing this a little yeah. bit earlier. It gives right. us a little bit of time. Yeah. To okay, that's actually a good point, Katie, because um, we've got public works under us and rec. Our agenda will get longer. Yes, exactly. So. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll count on that. And uh, let's see, item number seven, no executive session needed. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.